Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Super Idols RPG Arc 2 Q&A Retrospective. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as, as always, we have uh, the lovely Dana. Hello. The amazing T. Greetings. <laughs> the indelible Drac. Oh, hey. <laughs> no, but that one I don't know fun. why I'm doing this bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm in it now. I love I'm it. Committed. I love it. Keep going. I love it. Keep going. going. More, more, more. <laughs> more <laughs> and more. <laughs> the, the glamorous Luca. Hello. <laughs> and the incredible Liv. Hello. Yeah. I can't wait for all these new comic lines. A whole, a whole set <laughs> That's of That's what I was thinking as well. <laughs> Uh, how's everybody feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm doing great. I'm great. Yeah. 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 The whole family's together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is like, you might be surprised, listeners, because it, it seems like no time for, for all of y'all, except for the three weeks in between episode releases. Um, but it has been a, a long while since all of us have been able to record together as a full group. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Since like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. October, I want to say. Yeah. God, has it been so. that? Wow, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Jeez, no, <laughs> no January, because we did come together for a for a thing like. Uh, oh yeah. After that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, January. <laughs> mm -hmm. It went like October, nothing January, and then now. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is a reason for that. Uh, it is a it is a slightly bittersweet thing, but it's uh, it's something we we do want to announce uh, for arc three, um, and that is um, unfortunately we do have uh, a departure from the cast coming for the for the coming arc. Yeah, I'm gonna be leaving. Well, I have already left, but I suppose to everyone listening, I'm going to be leaving. Um, the Super Idols cast. Uh, honestly scheduling and the just stuff on my schedule has gotten wild i had to start uh taking my energy into account mm. and had to start mm -hmm. um uh taking things out of my schedule so i had time to actually sleep because apparently that's necessary um, i've been telling you for yeah. years this is, this is what happens when we keep telling them to get more sleep <laughs> it's, it's honestly listened. a miracle that they made it this far but also, like, yeah. god damn, just hats off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, god damn, just go to bed. <laughs> that too. Just sleep. Jesus. <laughs> god damn. It's fine, it's fine. We, we, all, we all know you just realized that you're too good for us. No. <laughs> no we finally talked I'm to your just... agent. and <laughs> <laughs> My agent was like, hey. Drag, we need to talk. Uh, no. Drag, you <laughs> so need that, to leave I Super Idols and you need agent. to take improv classes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, the real no. reason is that the is that the feds are finally catching up with you for for the crimes of eating Adele. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't be in one place for more than three hours at a time. And that's usually oh, how long a uh, recording session oh, wow. lasts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I <laughs> thought that was really her doing a concert the other day. <laughs> yeah, like she had a new album this year. It's insane what they can do with voice modulating technology these yeah. days. It's, yeah, yeah. Are they just having like Drac singing all of the <laughs> Dell's lines? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Drac in the recording booth, and then they went to the same place that they got Avril Lavigne's clone and ordered one up for Dell. Okay. okay. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that's like my favorite conspiracy. The Avril Lavigne clone. The Avril Lavigne clone. <laughs> There's no way the real Avril Lavigne could be back doing music again. <laughs> um, uh, okay. <sighs> I guess that's a nice segue into the, the first of our the first of our very important <laughs> questions today. That's right. Yeah, I didn't think right. I'd start off with this question, but it seems appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um, from from Jenny Blaze, beautiful, wonderful Jenny Blaze who's a, a very big fan of our show. Thank you very much for listening. And also a, a participant in our uh, ongoing Super Idols RPG, the RPG playtests. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jenny asks, a uh, question directed at, I guess, Jaden or Drac. I guess it would be Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> Does consuming Adele give you heartburn? <laughs> Wait, should I answer as Jaden? Like <laughs> <laughs> I guess whatever 
make sense? Question mark. Uh, I'll answer Drac because Jaden did not in fact eat Adele. But um, <laughs> oh, um, I see. You did. You did. <laughs> get him! Get him! Run away! Get him! <laughs> well, I will say eating Adele was easy on me. Um, hey. When I did uh, feast upon her, I ate her on a, a turning table. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, More. Oh, uh, uh, what else? Uh, what are some other adult names? Um, and to wash it down, I drank wine. So. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, you must so have been it, rolling, uh, in the, rolling in the deep at that. Yeah, uh, I drank a bit too much wine, ended up rolling in the deep, yeah. Um, but other, other than, other than the, a little bit, getting a little bit tipsy from the wine, um, she didn't give me heartburn. It was honestly pretty good. <laughs> I'm currently looking at more names of songs from Adele and I don't know any more that would work with this so I'm going to end a bit here <laughs> Skyfall <laughs> Skyfall just randomly yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> just start listing random <laughs> good point though rumour does rumour has it that Adele is actually in counts as one of your five a day so I'm actually healthier oh, for it okay. yeah yeah that's fine that's I'm sure um, you know, it's all water under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so are we going to do the rest of the show? We're going to keep chasing pavement. <laughs> I think it's it's best to say hello to our next question. <laughs> okay. This is a good warm up. We've all got that um, manic Q and A energy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to to maybe give Jenny a little bit more of a chance, maybe I'll ask one of her serious questions too. Uh, why, why don't we st start with a nice general question? That's always good for a QA. and a um, Because I think this will also be a good question to just lead off the discussion of this arc as well. Um, so Jenny asks, similar to my question from last arc, what would y'all say is your favorite moment of this arc? Beach episode. The beach episode was really good. Beach episode mm -hmm. is very good. Mm -hmm. I think it was amazing, but... Mm -hmm. Like, if, if it's one specific moment at the end of episode 28 where we just uh, have that amazing last rush to the... Oh. To the... To the cabin. To the, yeah. to the cabin, and then we get yeah. into the dream training, and the moment Prophetess comes out, yeah. just, let's <laughs> gather! And, like, and yeah. <laughs> said with the absolute answer. certainty that, that everyone is on the same page. Yes. <laughs> that was perfect. Beautiful. Like, and that was that amazing. Episode. Yeah, no, yeah. T, your your comedic timing in like a bunch of those like Camp Grand Star episodes, especially, was just a killer. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I will have to say I think the camp arc was probably like my highlight of this arc. Um, I don't know. We had just been like hyping it up and kind of like talking about it so much beforehand, and then mm -hmm. to finally do it. Um, was a lot of fun. Yeah. I liked oh, yeah. Camp, mm -hmm. Camp Grand Star. It was, it was very fun to design the challenges for you. Yeah, you had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many different obstacles that you could have encountered, but I love the ones that you did encounter. <laughs> oh, the dance battle was a, was a fun <sighs> moment from that arc for sure. Mm -hmm. The bear. <laughs> and waltzing yeah. with Queen Bee. That was really fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think my my favorite like specific moment uh easily it was the the one on one with uh with Valerie and Angie during yeah. the beach episode. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, definitely. That was we were we were both very much um in her feelings, I think. And yes. <laughs> it just it it really uh felt like a a really good culmination of of how far uh the relationship between those two characters had come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite was the beach episode as well with the um, beach volleyball little competition we had. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. oh, that was and so much Trixie fun. Absolutely destroying. <laughs> in <the end. laughs> um, that was amazing. I loved that. That was such a good crescendo to that oh, whole bit. <laughs> very anime as well. Um, very anime mm -hmm. so i i just ended up loving that that was great yeah like when i was cutting together that episode for the like the shortened version that we ran at rainbow roll fest i knew for sure it had to have two 
the two most important complete scenes for that episode would be the scene with Valerie and Angie and the beach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They're yeah. essential viewing. Mm-hmm. It's not a beach episode without the beach volleyball. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like also now we have also put um dabbled into sports anime. Like that's true. Listen, yeah, folks, that's true. We got it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm actually surprised there wasn't like someone on the side commentating on the volleyball game exactly what was going on and what move needed to happen. I, I have to tell you, when I was getting the transcript ready for for the screener version of that episode, um, uh, and I had to like put together a list of terms for the transcriber to know for that uh i did realize i had to like name all the anime references that were made in that episode (laughs) (laughs) excuse me what's a (laughs) haiku oh oh gosh but yeah it was a great um transition episode too yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going from that like very intense set of like challenge episodes into the equally intense in a different way heist finale episodes, it's it was really nice to have that fun breather in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I am uh, an ardent supporter of the argument that the uh, the best episode of Dragon Ball Z is the episode where Goku and Piccolo learn how to drive, and that's I think that's how I feel about <laughs> the beach episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need uh, you need those like moments of downtime and shenanigans in between intense story arcs. Yeah. yeah, even just to give the characters breathing room to explore what they would be like in those situations. Like, what would they like be like learning how to drive, for example? Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, I'm trying to think for for my favorite moments, like. Other than ones that have already been mentioned, because I also really like a bunch of the ones that you've said, especially like the the beach episode moments. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Um, I also really liked Lucia's initial audition for Rhythmics early on in the arc. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. 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 Where she yeah. like waltzed so up the wall with Queen Bee. Yeah. Oh yeah. She That's great. That <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And also it's- created like a doppelganger of the school's vice principal with a like cloud of bees <laughs> behind her as ride of the valkyries plays <laughs> and, the, and the little huddle yeah yeah the oh yeah the, the clone of, huddle the as well oh the clone huddle yeah that clone huddle is good yeah <laughs> well that one hayden ass clone yeah <laughs> it was okay <laughs> Damn, I'm fucking funny. Oh, you're so funny. funny. <laughs> you are. You so all funny. are. <laughs> no, you're all hella funny. I'm only trying to keep up. We're all just really hot and sexy and charming. It's hard, you know. Something and like humble. Like, We're all so yeah. humble. It's and incredible. And also our, also our guests, too, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just, you know, sometimes it's a tough job being, you know... Not just, you know, hot and sexy myself, but then being with so many hot and sexy and talented mm-hmm. people at the same time, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, so humble. Is it, is it too much? Is it too much? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that's the thing is, like, not only do you have to be hot and sexy to be on this podcast, but you also have to be, like, open to other hot and sexiness. And we're, we're just true. so that's good true. at it. We're just mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. good That's at true. It. <laughs> <laughs> These are all very true facts. Yeah, the rivalries are only in game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, a uh, quick aside from Aaron in the editing bay. I realized after editing this episode that we didn't give a shout out to Nathan for the wonderful work that they did as Zero Degrees towards the end of this arc, especially in helping to create those amazing psychic heart to heart sessions with each character and the team attacks for the finale. I think we forgot to go over them here because we had just recorded the idle talk for episode 34 right before this, which covered a lot of that ground. So I think I had it in my head that we had talked about that already. So that is my bad. So if you do want to hear us talk more about the team attacks and such especially, and you are a member of the Patreon, you can go listen to the idle talk for episode 34, uh, probably later tonight if you're listening to this immediately after it comes out, and uh, Monday at the latest. And in the meanwhile... Here is me, in this Q&A, stating right now, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Nathan. Episode 33 was absolutely eh, one of my favorite sessions so far this arc. Um, it was a joy to, again, kind of like the Cyber Idol session that we ran together, basically co-GM that episode together, and 
created some of the the most touching and fun moments of those last two episodes. So, oh, just I can't even express. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to Alice Kira as Cass and Polly. I will mention Cass again later this recording, but I did want to more directly also say thanks to Alice as well for being just such a lovable addition to the supporting cast this arc. I think everybody can agree that in this house, we love and support Cass Tora. <laughs> so thank you once again, Alice, for coming on this arc. I'm very much looking forward to bringing Cass back in future episodes. And lastly, it was a, a small role, but you can't say that it was an unmemorable one. Uh, thank you very much also to Fabi Garza, who played the the small guest role of Bear Larina in one of the Camp Grand Star episodes. We did mention the <laughs> the dancing bear before, but I did want to make sure that Fabi got sh shouted out by name, too, because, like, <laughs> who are you going to call when you need a bear girl in an AP? That's right. You call Fabi. <laughs> thank you, Fabi, for answering the call. <laughs> All right, back to the original recording. Here we go. Uh, how about another question? Yeah, I was just I was just looking at the the next one. Probably is mm -hmm. a good one to tie to what we've just been talking about with the beach episode. Uh, we have a question from Whammy, a uh, good friend of the show. Whammy, also a longtime member of my Discord. Um, having had the obligatory beach episode and the training arcs, what is another obligatory anime nonsense story arc that you would love to play? I know exactly oh. what my answer is, unless anybody else is ready to go. I need to think on that. Yeah, go ahead. Think I, about it I too. just realized I've, I really, I, I, I have already given my answer, which is everyone learns how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That, it, and it, oh <laughs> that would be really funny because oh. we famously made a point to be like, cool. and we ride the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We are. laughs> Superhero antics. Um, I think I'm always the the biggest proponent of that because I love transit riding representation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fair. I can drive. I yeah 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 and um yeah Alan's always riding uh, their bike. Um I it's it's it is very much specifically a Japanese cultural thing. Like I don't know about Canada, but like in America we don't really do this. Like my like growing up my high school randomly had like an october fest like we would do like an october fest oh. thing that was also oh, just secretly like a way for the choir kids to do a showcase that was all spooky themed and we would have like a haunted house <laughs> so it was like october fest meets halloween but if we could do hmm. a cultural festival episode Ooh, yeah. that would i be was fun. gonna Oh, that's a good I, one yeah you're totally reading my mind i was gonna be i like... do feel like we could do something along those lines because we have been wanting to do a thing with the enviro club for a while oh yeah that's true oh and then we get the mrs doubtfire vacation of alan yeah. where uh, <laughs> alan has to help yes. but then queen bee has to do because you know that like you know that it would be um because there's always like clubs and i mean i guess in um cultural festivals it's always classes but i think for us we would obviously do it as clubs like clubs or doing performances mm -hmm. clubs yeah. or keep, like putting up stands and stuff and i feel oh ooh, maybe this is where we bring in our drama club situation because you know the drama club yes. is going to do like a showcase and then we are obviously going to put on a performance <laughs> a little concert for the school yes jack exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> um jack just dropped a my hero academia reference uh to the culture festival arc mm -hmm. which was one of the best arcs absolutely it's really good damn good it's yeah really good yeah um but yeah that could be fun i think that would that's my answer um a fort mcnally high school cultural festival yeah, yeah i would i, I would agree. love to do that as part of arc that's three good. or four at some point <laughs> Mm -hmm. probably after the the tournament yeah that yeah. that's kind of what we're gearing up towards like not to yeah. spoil the structure of arc three but we've got we've already got a bunch recorded for arc three and a lot of it is this tournament that we've hinted at for a long time now <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but after that oh, yeah, there's that's... definitely some room for some downtime i think in the in the way that the beach episode was it was some downtime mm -hmm. i think one that i would love to see and i don't know if it's like a i mean it probably isn't I feel like I watched a decent amount of anime to know, to notice this if it was. But like, this is very My, My Hero Academia. But like, going abroad and like having to experience and go mm -hmm. through what Super Idol Dem is like there. Oh, yeah. Like, probably oh, shadowing yeah. a like famous Super Idol. And then inevitably we get caught up in some kind of like 
one to two shots um, like an adventure, adventure. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, or a tour, yeah, mm-hmm. like anime movie. Like, is it, we get ridiculously powerful, but we never mention it again in that actual main <laughs> main continuity. Um, no one yeah, talks about how. Yeah, you get your special how... like super pre cure forms and. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he. So we suddenly trade powers, but never talk about it. <laughs> the My Hero Academia movies and the Inuyasha movies are canon. Y'all just don't like it. Y'all don't like realizing that. Y'all don't accept that. <laughs> Is it canon? Because if it's canon, I want it to be. But we're talking about Bakugo had... Bleep, spoilers. And then doesn't remember and no one mentions it. <laughs> we will talk about this because cause nobody remembers. Because nobody remembers. We will talk about what? this off... Nobody remembers? Okay. Yeah, sure. Fine. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about this off mic, but that movie in particular is 100% canon. The villain is actually in the manga, granted for like in a tiny corner, but it's canon. It's, I, I want it to be canon. I'm just annoyed that it's never mentioned and isn't. As far as I can tell, other than that panel, it doesn't feel like it's treated as canon. But that's all. I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <laughs> well, we're, I'm going to start screaming about Horikoshi and how mad I am. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> I can't wait for our next uh, Patreon bonus episode, which is just a uh, half an hour of Liv and Drac arguing about anime. <laughs> and then the other half an hour is me and B, or me and B, me and P talking K-pop. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and and, and slowly but surely indoctrinating Aaron. That's the thing that I'm, that's the actual they're getting, thing. They're I'm getting me most. there. They're slowly but surely getting me there. That was my favorite mm-hmm. moment of this arc was Aaron <laughs> listening to my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's true. I finally know what a K-pop is, <laughs> yeah. K-pop which is, is. great oh for God. me as a, a showrunner of an idol show. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> proud of you. You've grown so much. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, I think this came up last Q and A too. But yes, I have yeah. made progress in my K-pop <laughs> journey. I I know. <clears throat> I vaguely know the names of the members of B- B- of BTS. I can even say their name if I try hard enough. <laughs> Yeah, three letters. You're nailing it. (laughs) (laughs) No, roast me. Go do it. (laughs) Sorry. That's so fucking funny. Drag her. (laughs) A little of the army popped out there. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anybody else have any any anime? Animation. Anime. Oh, I'm just spreading it now, aren't I? <laughs> I was trying to say animation shenanigans, and ooh, boy, howdy, was that a <laughs> fucking uh, fire for my life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a rough one. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I think I have uh, one of these questions that I would also like to like to ask Aaron. Oh, sure. Uh, from from Siobhan of of Otherware and friend of the show. Uh, can Aaron give us? Give all of us a breakdown on how you worked out Karen's backstory. I'm really interested in hearing about how long you kept it secret and if it was updated over the course of recording arc one and two. Oh, oh yeah. Now, the question is how how in detail do you want me to get on this? Because I could get into the weeds if you want. <laughs> as much as you want to. Go, yeah, for go for it. I'll try and hold back as much as I can just because I know we have a limited time frame mm-hmm. today. Um, so I think you you probably know a decent amount already from what I've said. I think I've said some of this on mic, so like, apologies if any of this is a repeat. Um, but basically, Karen did indeed come from my desire to have a Sans Undertale for the show. Like, someone who was <laughs> like a joke character who's surprisingly powerful or scary, but in a fun way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I decided this mainly when I was trying to design the first club meeting for the for the first episode. Because I, I kind of wanted there to be a few different idol hopefuls there other than just the PCs, so it wouldn't seem like there was zero interest in the club outside of them. So I made a bubbly girl and an angry girl and a random guy who was there to meet girls and left immediately. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I did actually have another girl planned at one point, but she kind of got melded into Diana. That's a long story. <laughs> but I, I needed one more and I thought, hmm. I, I kind of also want one NPC who is going to stay in the club and be, like, their club president or club manager or whatever it was. Especially, like, the I was inspired by, like, the club president from Genshiken, I think I've mentioned before. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that, like, smiling weirdo who's always in the corner mm-hmm. and everybody's <laughs> heard rumors about, but no one knows exactly yeah. what their deal is. But they're so nice that nobody asks them. And that's, it worked out beautifully. <laughs> 
It did. Wow. That was the wildest recording session I think we've had <laughs> mm -hmm. by far. That reveal. I think so, yeah. yeah. My god, yes. Mm -hmm. The way that it transitioned immediately from like the end of the session into th theory time with rhythmics. <laughs> yes. If you if you're if you're a member of the Patreon, you can you can hear that session. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's great. Um, I guess as far as like her actual backstory goes, um, I think I'll be honest, I don't think I thought hard enough about the implications of her being that powerful and having like this creepy invisible friend for a while at the beginning. Cause I was mainly focused on just the idea of, oh, wouldn't this be a fun reveal someday? <laughs> Um, uh, but I did eventually realize I was as I was playing her that I was having to like think more about why she was doing various things and what she was thinking in the background, and I didn't really have great answers. So I did eventually have to sit down for a, for a while over the course of like a couple months and really knock out a proper backstory for her. And I did that probably like through the releases of episodes eight and ten. And as I kind of explained at the end of episode eleven, I had. Um, good friend of the show, Ayumi Shinozaki from Sparkle Side Chats, come to help me with the backstory for her because Karen is uh, mixed white and Japanese and I wanted to make sure that I was taking proper consideration uh, for her background into that. And I'm really happy with what we ended up for that. <laughs> so I, I do really hope especially that we can get more into Karen's like history and family stuff at some point. But I'm, I'm also very conscious of the fact that like um, I don't... See, this is the, this is also why I say I, I wasn't really thinking enough about, like, how this would affect the story when I first came up with her. Because I didn't want her to take the spotlight away from the PCs more than necessary. Like, again, I wanted her to be kind of the weirdo off to the sides while you all were doing, like, the important stuff for the most part. Um, but, of course, when, like, that reveal happened, you can't ignore that. That's a part of the plot now. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to be very conscious of, like when I take the spotlight to do more with her, because, like, obviously people are interested in that, and I want to I wanna get into it too, but I also, like, she is an NPC at the end of the day, and I want the focus to be on the PCs, first and foremost. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I hear you on that. Mm -hmm. But I will say, at least for me, as, like, I would so be down for, like, a Karen mini-R. Like, <laughs> yeah. a... a set time where we delve into Karen and and figure out what's going on with her. I do think that is very um I don't know, I feel like that still fits into the realm of what people look for in when they're playing a teacher RPG of like and now we're going to delve into the mystery of this NPC. Like not everything always needs to be about one character getting a highlight or one character doing something like um you know we don't always need to have a spotlight mm -hmm. on us individually or us as a group. Like Karen is somebody who's very embedded into like the story and the crew mm -hmm. and everything like that. So um, I totally hear you on that respect. And granted, like, I think that opportunity will arise when it's time. Mm -hmm. But if we had like a what's <laughs> what's up with Karen arc, I would be down <laughs> for that. I can I can imagine the like WandaVision jingle for this right now. Like, <laughs> yes, What's exactly. What's up with Karen? <laughs> da, 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 da. Perfect. Oh, uh, that might be especially relevant given what her backstory actually is. <laughs> no Boise. To, to tease a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, eventually I do want to get into that in more detail. I I I had thought about like doing some kind of like side episode at some point where like. Either it would be like a pre-recorded thing, or maybe we would do it where like where like they do it on some other shows where like you all play like characters in a part of mm -hmm. Karen's past or something like that. Oh, that would be, that would be kind of awesome. Oh yes, I love doing yeah. stuff like that. I'm absolutely down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that would be really fun and a great way to get that story across without like taking away from it during the main plot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm super duper down for that. Yeah. I guess towards like the last bit of Siobhan's question, as far as like if the backstory has changed over time, um, the broad strokes are mostly the same since I did the bulk of the writing for it. But I did recently change some details about how Karen and the friend first met and what the mechanics of their relationship are. Like nothing, nothing that changes what's been said on the show so far, but like just something that made a bit more sense to me after I did the first big info dump 
and then kind of sitting with the rest of what I'd written for a while and thinking about it more. But other than that, it's uh, been mostly the same since I wrote it out. Oh, yeah. I I was really curious to hear just because uh, anytime there's a, a Q&A, one of my, uh, for, for, you know, a podcast, one of my uh, first questions is always, uh, you know, how far back the, the big reveals were planned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And in this case, it was a, a day one thing, more or less. Like, again, the details oh, weren't all there at the start, but the basic idea of Karen secretly has a super powerful invisible friend that nobody knows about has been a day one mm -hmm. long con. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the the first episode, it is clear in retrospect with Karen just producing the popcorn out of nowhere that that was a <laughs> a long setup. Yeah, well, those are my favorite types of reveals in things where like some bullshit that you don't question because it's bullshit turns out to be like a an important clue. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like the light sticks at the very beginning <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i think that's that's what i got to say about karen now why don't i why don't i turn this on somebody else how about <laughs> yeah okay. i see we have a question further down the page for t okay we have a question from another good friend of the show rowan uh, another longtime member of my Discord. Um, question for T about Angie. Does Angie ever wonder where she would be now, like maybe even facing off against Rhythmics, if her parents hadn't gotten caught? Um, maybe at the very beginning, but I think like where they are in the story now, no, she doesn't. She's um all in on the uh on the Rhythmics game. So I think uh she's kind of accepted that that ship has passed and uh she has changed her she seems like a person that well i know she's the person i made her uh she <laughs> <laughs> hyper focuses on things like so she has a goal she'll do anything to achieve it so before that it was dance and becoming a professional dancer and now it's super it's being a super idol and now she has this team and also um it's protecting the team and stuff like that too so it's like it's expanded more than just the angie show in angie's world so to speak so Aww. no i don't think she thinks about it these Aww. days much <laughs> anymore and even like uh now that she's told her mom everything yeah. um that's a bit of a probably a relief for her too because um they were so close before and she was really mad at her for a very long time so uh yeah yeah Oh, that that conversation between Angie and her mom in the second soloists episode was really, really good to finally play out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it sucks yeah. that she has to like redesign the jacket and stuff, but you know. <laughs> I'm I'm sure we've we've talked about this, but I'm sure Karen would be willing to use her reality warping powers to help because <laughs> resewing yeah. through like bomber jacket material can't be easy. No, probably not. But yeah. Uh, I guess uh, there is a follow-up question attached to this one in that case. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of Angie's mom, um, how's her involvement with the whole corporate crime stuff doing? <laughs> with, like, helping the group out with it, I mean. Um, I'm not really sure, because that's kind of like, you're playing her? So I think, like, <laughs> right now, like, uh, uh, she's working on the lawsuit against... Um, What's her name? Oh, against Prophetess. <laughs> yeah. Prophetess. Yeah, that's yeah, mainly why I asked. I guess to, to yeah. reframe it, like, I guess where do you, what do you see as, like, Angie and her mom having been up to between the end of this yeah. arc and, like, the beginning of tournament stuff? Yeah, her mom's the person that will be like, well, as long as you didn't get caught, I'm cool with it. Like, I get that kind of vibe from her. And, yeah, uh, yeah. She's like, I'm not happy you broke into a high security facility and beat up a bunch of guards and stuff, but you didn't get arrested, so mm -hmm. I can look over it. You know, that's how I imagine yeah. it. And she sure as down. heck isn't going to snitch on you, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, and I think it's good that there is an adult person in Angie's life that she can trust with all that information, you know? Because, like, um, yeah, that, that's I know she's she said it before in in the game but she'd be like don't trust any adults because at the time she didn't mm. you know the most important ones in her life kind of betrayed her in a way so but she has someone that she can actually 
you know, maybe understands the corporate system a little bit better than she does, um, might have better ideas of taking it down. But yeah, I think they're working on the profitous lawsuit because um, mm-hmm. Angie's, <laughs> I think, like, especially in that scene, yeah, like, I know there's a lot of times where, go. yeah, where Angie gets really pissed off about stuff. But I think in that particular part, she's very justified in how she felt. And I'm sure if she told her mom about that and that, you know, there wasn't really consent, informed consent going on, um, yeah, her mom would be like, oh, we're going to war and <laughs> she's going to pull out her, you know, Karen bad side, you know, the one that talks to the manager, <laughs> yeah. not the, our, our character I, I was about to say, if you were writing that out, it, it would be Karen parentheses bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karen, Karen parentheses, parentheses bad. Derogatory. Parentheses derogatory. Yeah. 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 That's derogatory. That might be, that's the word. Yeah. That might be interesting to explore, to have like a ace detective courtroom style drama oh, where they're God. dealing with this in the lawsuit. But, now there's uh, some anime yeah. bullshit. Bring some Phoenix right into this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The trial episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I think that's what they're mostly they're mostly working on. And now that uh, at least the immediate threat of Crimson Signal isn't there, mm. they're probably going to focus on Prophetess and this whole, you know, let's look at how the system's treating children and stuff like that. So I guess speaking of TV show bullshit... <laughs> Here's here's a fun one from uh someone we mentioned earlier. It's uh it's from Ayumi. <laughs> uh who yeah. who wants to know um what is everyone's favorite TV show? And this is for the characters, not not you the players. <laughs> oh, the characters. Yeah, what's what's ev- what's mm-hmm. every character's favorite TV show? Oh, um, okay. here's uh you know, I feel like this is going to be a real a real shocker, but um have y'all heard of a show called Review Starlight? <laughs> no, tell me more. <laughs> what? Uh, yes. So I've, I've, I know that I've, I referenced this for, um, uh, for Aaron and players at various points, but uh, I, a lot of uh, Valerie's powers are uh, inspired by uh, the the sort of dynamic fight scenes in uh, in Review Starlight, and that is like. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's intentional. That's canonical. She <laughs> really likes that show. Maybe maybe should have maybe should have finished it uh, and 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 learned that it was uh, it was not actually about being uh, a cool girl boss that uh, wins uh, that you know proves that she's better than everyone else. But uh, uh, you know she's she's getting there, and uh, so so yes, she is just um, she she did just. Uh, decide to become her favorite anime character in hmm. real life. I do That's always powerful. I do always love that that meme Respect. that you posted about Tendo Maya having girl power. <laughs> yes. I hmm. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna say it. Lucia's too perfect. She needs a flaw. I think she likes Riverdale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can Interesting. see Interesting. Who else likes Riverdale? Hmm. I don't like Riverdale. I watch Riverdale. Uh, okay. Yeah. So just masochistic behavior. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes like it. <laughs> I like. I mean, the the Gargoyle King was a highlight. Okay. Uh, I am embarrassed to say that when the Gargoyle King, Gargoyle King showed up for the first time, I legitimately screamed. Like I screamed in yeah. terror because it was a jump scare and it scared me. Um. But yes, I, along with my best friend, watch Riverdale once a week. We have a drinking game, and um, I'm pretty sure it's ruining our friendship. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I do the same with my fiancé. We watch Riverdale together. Well, see, you're you're marrying that person. Clearly, it's, <laughs> it's, it's bringing you two closer. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure my friend hates me. Um, no, she doesn't. <laughs> Hi, Steph. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I think Lucia unashamedly really likes Riverdale and I think it's a f- I mean she's one out of five kids so I think it's a fight for the TV regardless mm-hmm. but like first of all Ava should not be watching Riverdale she's far too young Tony has no interest in Riverdale only wants the TV to play video games you know that Ren and 
and Mateo are roasting her <laughs> for watching this show. And I think her <laughs> and I think her parents are like, listen, everybody gets TV time. This is the one show that your sister wants to watch. Just let her. And then they go to bed and they talk to each other about how bad <laughs> It is. And the fact They're that secretly like... roasting Lucia up in their bedroom. <laughs> yeah. As they hear muffled sounds of like, aren't you kids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was the Mothman. <laughs> Goodness. Um, I think for Angie, it's probably not a specific TV show, but um, ever since this whole Crimson Signal thing started. She started watching like detective shows and true crime and all this stuff. And now she can't stop. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's what it is now. I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Just <laughs> bin binging every season of law and order. Yeah, pretty much. I, yeah, I can absolutely see Angie being the, listen, I know it's copaganda, but <laughs> The person yeah yeah the brooklyn 99 is the best show to ever exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's probably in there too but she likes the serious stuff and like yeah. documentaries oh, she's, oh, she's and gotta stuff watch like Columbo, that though the <laughs> the best oh, yeah. detective oh, show yeah <laughs> yeah maybe i should start watching as you know research for it <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. You just should. for stuff really like that good. she could bring in and just be like this is just like the episode of <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god if if Angie did that and one last thing that'd be I was amazing say, and one last that's what I was thinking as well <laughs> yeah she like does a cool idle spin and turns on her heel and points at someone and says one last thing <laughs> I can also just see Angie like getting ready for school head pod uh, airpods in being like so this murder took place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that one TikTok. Her hands were cut off. Her legs were cut off. Her nose was cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in this bright pink room. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leanne was a normal girl. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I love and with like no facial expression of like <laughs> whatever's going on <laughs> completely unbothered yeah well I think I think right now Allen slash Queen Bee they they actually got them really into yellow jackets and uh, it, it started out just because of the title but it it mm -hmm. resonates like there's survival there's uh, there's drama there's it's in, yeah what is that? I, I don't think I know what that is. Oh, it's a uh, it's a show about uh, uh, like a high school soccer team that gets lost in the woods after like a, in a plane crash, and they are not found for nineteen months. Ooh. Oh, oh lord! Things get real weird. Not everyone makes it out, and like it's part what happened, and part ten years later them having to reckon reckon with what happened and what they did and. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow. You know what? Yeah, things got really intense. There's a bit of Lord of the Flies, a bit of a. Uh, it's pretty cool. That sounds cool. I might have to actually watch that one. Oh, what was mine? So I think Jaden's. I feel like. I don't know if this is just like a weird sense of deja vu, but I feel like I've answered this before. Um, But Jaden's favorite show is. um At the moment, I'd imagine it's probably like Gravity Falls. Mm. Um, nice. Especially after the whole um, Crimson Signal thing, I think they've Gravity Falls is like their version of true crime, where it's like <laughs> very, very fantasy esque, but like um, there are like hidden clues in every episode, or ciphers and hidden messages backwards, um, like recordings and stuff that you can dig into and figure out. Um, before that, um, it was definitely Steven Universe and Adventure Time. Um, I was a big Steven Universe and Adventure Time fanboy. I can I can imagine those being like fun shows to watch with Alicia as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like it's, it was probably even a case of where he would watch it, and Alicia was like, "That's for kids. I'm not gonna watch that." <laughs> um, I'm like, "No, Get it's em. really good. You need to watch it." Um, and then got them into watching it as well, and it was kind of like their thing. Like they yeah. watch it together. 
Oh, that's sweet. And this is <laughs> this is why we imagine Jaden's eyes lighting up with Steven Universe star eyes whenever something <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exciting happens. Yeah. yeah. Or, or um, if right now, because I'm in love with it, and I know Jaden would be Spy Family, um, he would be all about Spy oh, Family right I now. I finally yeah. started watching that. <laughs> Me too. I Taste. watched the first <laughs> like three episodes uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, and it's amazing. If yeah. you're listening to this and you haven't watched it, this is um, your sign right here, right now. Watch Spy Family. If, okay, you've, if you've been holding off, now's the time to not. Yeah. The first season is done. We will get another season in October. You have time, folks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do just want to say, since uh, I, I actually forgot that I, I tweeted about this exact thing until Aaron mentioned it, um, I did say uh, on Twitter a while ago, I feel like Valerie's early characterization in Super Idols makes more sense if you know that while getting ready to play, I repeatedly watched the Maya versus Karen different Karen, uh, fight in Review Starlight, but also didn't get past episode four until much later, and so did Valerie, presumably. <laughs> presumably. Uh, then I say, Valerie, boy, this first act villain song about how reaching the top of the roster requires sacrificing your relationships is cool and compelling. Guess I'll keep rewatching it instead of seeing how that turns out for her in the third act. <laughs> I don't even know the plot of Review Starlight, and I know <laughs> why that's funny. <laughs> Do you do you think Tendo Maya had girl power? Do you think she effectively utilized girl power by embracing and enforcing the hierarchy and cutthroat competition that the review system imposes on performers? God, I really need to actually watch yeah, that show. It's probably very relevant, not just to Valerie, but to the concept of this show in general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, l letting me do my uh, obligatory Dana reads a meme out loud yes. minute. We love it. We didn't start the recording with hello. <laughs> <laughs> we did just That's We true. did just release an outtakes reel for episode 34 that included the the <laughs> Dana's reenactment of the hello Mr. Obama bit. <laughs> Here's the thing. The thing that you all don't know is that now anytime Dana <laughs> and I pop on the podcast or um, um, in the Discord call, we always have to start with hello, hello. and to which Aaron will answer hello and everybody else <laughs> ignores <laughs> <laughs> Very important to me. I need rituals in life. <laughs> I should clarify. I just say hello because I want to say hello. <laughs> Not because of the bit. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um do we have time for a few more questions yeah i'm just looking to see what the the most important ones to get to before we wrap up here might be i like this one from fd but we don't have to i just think it's fun yeah let's do if we if you want it let's do the the first one uh yeah I... from fd a, a newer fan of the show welcome fd <laughs> um what has been your inspiration for the rhythmics members magical alter egos um, I think we've we talked a bit about like your musical inspirations for them specifically in the last Q and A. So I'd like to maybe focus on like designing like the look for them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This would highlight on, but also I have the the brain of a fish. So if we have <laughs> answered this before, we can just cut it. <laughs> yeah, I think as long as uh, like we know kind of what the the musical inspirations are, but like let's look at like costume and hair and whatnot because that's fun. Yeah, I really just, um, the way I envisioned this was just, you know, a lot of, a lot of the K-pop hip hop off outfits and how they don't actually look what like a lot of actual hip hop <laughs> artists will wear usually. So that's kind of what I was going for. It was just. Yeah. I remember you had a, like a, a different costume idea at the beginning as well, too. Oh. Oh, yeah, it was going to be more of like a leotard ballet thing, but then I just didn't like how it looked in my head. So I was like, nope, we're going to go for fake hip hop. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the benefits of like rec pre recording a bunch of episodes before we launched because mm. I was able mm. to like grab your description of her outfit from episode four uh, mm -hmm. when you changed it and transplant it back into episode two so that the continuity would be the same. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. Um, that is fascinating to know because I have always just accepted that, like, 
Angie was dressed like one of the kids from Dance Mall. <laughs> like, I think you specifically described it as like when dance recital kids do hip hop dances. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know that. <laughs> I know that look. Mine was um, my character's whole um, like magical idol look was based on Utah No Prince Summer, I think it's called, or Princes of Song. Mm-hmm. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, or or Uta Pri to the to the idol yeah, kids. That's it. Um, because even when I originally had um joined, I think I'd only watched like maybe two or three different like music slash idol based anime, and all of them were very fantastical to the point of like two of them were like based in space, and the powers they had was used to protect the planet. So like this probably isn't the greatest um. Mm-hmm inspiration for my character so I, I watched a few episodes and liked the outfits and I was like this is cool but I also want him to basically be the avatar and because of that <laughs> I can't think of like one color scheme that would fit because they're constantly changing what kind of abilities they're using at any given moment so I was like why not choose all of them <laughs> <laughs> so I just went with the, the basic look um, that most of the, the the boy idols having that um and then it changes the main colors change depending on what ability Jaden is using Mm -hmm. Um, i love that i especially love being able to like in the video versions of the episodes being able to change that when Jaden used his different powers yeah uh i've always been a fan of um i guess like dynamic costuming um and since my outfit is literally magical i thought why not Absolutely, why not? This is really fucking... I don't know why this is blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it, though, can't you? Like, if you look at, like, yeah. Otoya's outfit yeah, in the middle there. Yeah, it's like, it's... it's. Now that you have said it, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> but the fact that <laughs> Jaden's inspiration was Utapri is really throwing me for a loop. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I don't think, I can't think of like a a specific character that, uh, I had as inspiration for, uh, for, uh, Violence Violet's outfit. Uh, I do know that I, I do remember I, I decided that I just, I wanted to play like a goth character, like a mean goth early on. And I also decided that, uh, her, her main color theme would be, uh, would be purple and, uh, that was also what I decided before I decided her name would be uh, Violence Violet. And I think I just decided that uh, her, her idol form would go in a, you know, gothic Lolita direction. And uh, I I looked at various outfits, but uh, I mean, I, I'm not a, actually a big fa- fashion person. So I just sort of, I, I think the, the, the the best like summation of of the picture I had in my head was actually uh something like a a haunted doll you know like I can see that uh, yeah I see uh, you know uh in, including her uh like pale skin which is also just you know sort of a a goth goth thing and and the fact that her her idol form at least initially is a very abstract ideal of of an appearance and and uh not very um like it 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 doesn't have a lot of like it's it's something that she thinks is cool but it's not something that uh has as much of her personality uh in it as she might like and is ends up being uh at least initially very doll like Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's, well it's like actual like the victorian inspired lolita fashion it's very like stuffy and restrictive kind of but it's like it has that cool aesthetic but like it's also like you can tell it's more reserved than maybe she would normally might be Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's definitely uh very intentional and not me not having much of an idea of how how to describe a a more interesting outfit at the time (laughs) well it worked out quite well because that's uh i think vivi's outfit is probably one of the more popular ones to draw when people do fan art (laughs) of the show Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. it's very good it's iconic super it, it iconic is, i i do i i am really happy with the design and and very uh very happy with uh onsta's art as well yes mm-hmm. 
The the expression is so good. Which I can yes. I can spoil by the way. We might be getting a, some new Onsta art on the horizon at some point. Ooh. That's all I'll say about that for now. <laughs> hmm. Um, I can go. Um so also like T, I was inspired by um K pop outfits. Um there was uh, yeah, just basically like K pop two piece outfits was big inspiration and then as i was kind of like going from there i realized that there was something lightly y2k ish about the way trixie was designed which i think leans or works well with her um her powers and stuff like that or not her powers her her talent her rapping um but just like the big hoops and like a big puffy jacket um I don't know, like, I wanted that kind of a look. Um, <laughs> even though she needs to stop tanning, um, I do enjoy the way Ariana Grande dresses for her concerts and stuff, like her stage outfits. Mm. And I wanted something like that. Like, I wanted something that very much felt like, oh, any major pop girly could go on stage and this would be what she wears. I love pop idol fashion, both, like, in the East and in the West. Um like Meg Thee Stallion's outfits are all so good. Yeah, Doja yeah. Cat's so good. But yeah, anyway, that, that was like the inspiration very simply physically. Um, mm -hmm. And I just really like mini pigtails. <laughs> I like yeah. half up, half down pigtails. <laughs> um, and I, it was important to me to, for her to still have black, like her hair to clearly show that she is black. So laying like the baby hairs and stuff like that, or her puffy, um, face buttons yeah yeah she's just she's just a cute little black girl yeah mm -hmm. i i love i love trixie's outfit so much thank you i'm deep so i'm good. very proud of it yeah <laughs> See, no, the, 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 the big that prismatic ice. jacket is definitely like one of my favorite things about it oh yeah it's just she such a look a little disco. she has to be a little disco ball <laughs> if you're gonna have light powers why wouldn't she be a little disco ball yeah but yeah, I think we haven't done uh, Luca for this question yet. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, for kind of winding kind of like mood board thing, putting together the inspirations, there was uh, like I, I knew I wanted, to, I wanted heels because fingers. I knew I I guess I kind part of it is like when uh, Peter Parker gets the black suit in Spider-Man 3. Uh, <laughs> part of it is... Uh, Riverdale's own cherry blossom with her amazing color, like she has the most consistent color scheme. Some of it, a little bit, was I guess Jigen from Lupin in just in posture and just general attitude, and just mixed together. And honestly, I didn't figure out the, the like the necklaces until I just found them as an optional pick group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it just came together a bit haphazardly, but it worked really well. Hey, high five to fellow character design through Picru users. <laughs> and I guess That's for the hair, there was a little something, there was a little bit of like a, a Betty from the Spider-Man movies, but also there was some specific hair, hair cast that Jesse J had at some point. I don't know when and how. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I remember sending photos of Jesse J to Onsta when doing the art for Queen Bee. I can see that actually now that you I see the Jesse J inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, like not only the hair, but also like she has some some of the jackets that fit that look as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh so I have another question here from Rowan, which I'm very, very interested to hear. Would you all like to drop a lore nugget that you have formed in your brain but will probably never come out during actual play? I would love to. This is the one of the uh i think this might have been the only question that i uh like wrote out an answer for in advance because i was thinking about it um there is something that i uh th uh thought about a while ago and i think it's maybe too sad to uh to bring up in the podcast i don't actually i don't remember if i mentioned it well it's definitely not come up in character i don't remember if i've mentioned it uh like outside of that before but it is about uh it's about uh valerie choosing uh the name valerie which is that uh she originally 
picked the name uh, Violence Violet for uh, for her her idol persona because she wanted her regular everyday name to be VV2, but uh, Rain Shatter Records said that she had to keep her personal and idol identity separate so that uh, you know they could hmm. uh, retain ownership of the the IP of her idol identity, and so. Uh, she had to choose and decided that Vivi was the name that she wanted to be famous under when she was an idol and had to think of another name for herself in Aww. her everyday life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's okay. She, she ended up really liking being Valerie too, and wouldn't, wouldn't like stop using that if she could at this point. But, um, you know, it, it still stings that her, her first choice Vivi, uh, like legally speaking belongs to rain shadow yeah no it's like I, i'm happy that she's valerie too but like god oh that's so that's really sweet and also bittersweet mm -hmm. yeah new law arc <laughs> new uh <laughs> phoenix Wright law arc we yeah get angie on get this back your name <laughs> we get your name back yeah. Uh, i did realize while writing that out before that does sound very much makes makes her contract sound more like um like a deal with the Fae where she had to sign sign her true name <laughs> off to get magic yes. powers. That's true. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure bit, that hey? the Fae that we've That's had true. on as a guest this arc would appreciate that. <laughs> yes. By that I, I mean I by, also, by that I mean Alice. <laughs> yes, I, I'm also sure that Fae wouldn't uh would not uh, you know, t take someone's uh chosen name from them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which quick quick spin back to like great moments from the show. Can I just say that one of my favorite little moments is, like, after, like, Karen shows that they're all in a pocket dimension in her apartment, Cass, like, to herself going, like, did Karen get isekai'd? Persona <laughs> or stand? <laughs> question mark. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Continue. I have one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Please. And I thought this, like, uh, a little bit into Jaden's, I guess, arc. I don't know if that's the right, right word for it, but a little bit into playing Jaden. And mm -hmm. I think um, before leaving um, the UK, Jaden would actually, with his sister and parents, he was the a, a GM for the little family like teacher with E campaign. Oh, Aww. yeah. And they tried to like carry it on in the when he came over to Canada, but just time zones didn't really make it possible. Mm -hmm. And it, at first, internet connections were weird. His parents don't know anything about technology, um, so it just ended up falling through. But I think that's like a little, a little tidbit. I um, mean, playing RPGs like over the internet, you came <laughs> to uh, North America. That just seems yeah, that seems, seems like more travel than it's worth. <laughs> honestly yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah i think that's that was like definitely one little piece of law such head i had for for him and definitely because i'm always a sucker for the classic um you play a teacher rpg inside a teacher rpg because I just, I just find that very funny um Aww. so definitely a moment there's definitely a point where i was like it would be kind of fun to have Jaden try to gm a game for rhythmix uh but oh, yeah oh that never, never happened <laughs> oh this is great actually because i think we we didn't say that specifically but like very minor spoilers for one of the upcoming arc three episodes but i think we did make an offhand like reference to ttrpgs and Jaden's family during <laughs> one of the upcoming interlude episodes we might have I actually can't remember but we probably did yeah yeah so keep an it, eagle eagle eared listeners keep an ear out for that yeah mm -hmm. and you'll know the hidden the hidden meaning behind it uh well, I think that, well, since Alan was uh, 13, uh, their grandma insisted that the kid had one glass of wine at Christmas. Aw, cute! <laughs> and they they would really like to be able to just... It feels like adult and cool to have a drink for them, though they would probably not like most of what, like, most cocktails or things like that. Not even a bee's knees? Honestly, it has gin in it, so I'm not sure. That's true. Gin's not <laughs> not great. Not the best uh, first liquor to get started on. Um, also, they're underage. But yeah. Oh goodness, for Lucia. 
I guess like we've talked about it a little bit. Um, Lucia has like tried and given up a lot of hobbies before she finally found music and rapping and everything like that. Um, but I think the secret is is like she's very bad at a lot of things. <laughs> um, and I I can't ever think of a way that that would just naturally occur, like naturally occur and naturally show itself. But like I don't think she can do sports. I don't know how good she is with animals. Like um i think she gets kind of okay grades um but i don't know like she just truly is and i say this with nothing but love in my heart for her absolutely mediocre to abysmal at most things (laughs) (laughs) oh we do love her so much though Mm -hmm. yeah that's fine she is the best at making trouble for other people yeah exactly and for herself but yeah Just being a little menace is her specialty, but you know. (laughs) Good trouble. Good trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we do one for Angie yet? Or T, do you have one? Um, I don't really have one for Angie. Yeah. I think in general, she's very, what you see is what you get. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) With her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) No secrets, really. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. She has a temper problem. I don't know if you know (laughs) it. (laughs) <laughs> what? <laughs> okay in that case i think we'll probably wrap up fairly soon here um i think i can do there's one that i know i can there's one on this list that i know i can knock out real quick <laughs> and then i have one very important question to end everything it on <laughs> mm-hmm. uh so the quick one that i can say is from uh gaby aka Al- alien bunny in my discord um for this is a karen question <laughs> is what made you join the Idol Club if this hasn't been asked? Um, and I'm I'm gonna let Karen answer this question real quick here. <clears throat> Idol's good. <laughs> <laughs> standing, yes. standing ovation. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Is she wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong at all. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> she doesn't really have like a stronger reason than that, honestly. She's been like you know, you all know the deal, basically, with her. She's been joining idol clubs for many years now. She just likes idols a lot. She's and a she's lifelong right. music fan. And then the the last and final question. Very, very important question. From our dear, intrepid editor, Kathleen. Mm. As, a, as an extremely important inquiry for all of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Question is, what's next for Rhythmics? Collabs? Album? Anti-corporate direct action? Mukbang streams? Question mark, question mark. Mm. I have thought about this for Jaden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh. I think, now that he's back home, I think he's going to pick up GMing again so he can get back to the campaign with his parents um, and sister. Aww. And I think he's going to try and coax them into making it a streamed game. <gasps> Uh, yes, the family that uh, plays together. Yeah, Aww. it's gonna be. It'll be very like. It won't be like high quality. You won't have like multiple camera angles. It'll, it'll be. It, it honestly, max three people watching it, and it's all the people playing. And, <laughs> <laughs> but they, I think he just really enjoys the idea of being able to create something still and putting it out there in his spare time while still being able to play um, and just hang out with his. Uh, family again Aww. obviously he's going to continue perf- um, playing and performing and practicing but I think I think he's trying to take this time to try other things they can really gauge whether or not like gauge what his actual passion is um, and I think right now he has a he misses uh, the little TTRPG games and things that maybe maybe streaming is a, a thing you can try out next mm-hmm also, to clarify, when you say that uh, that Jaden's home now, um, just to to clarify again with like the the plan with Drag leaving, um, again we have recorded um, several episodes of Arc Three already. So Jaden, as as far as the listeners are concerned, isn't going away immediately. Yeah. But the plan, like that we've played out so far, is that uh, Jaden will be around for a couple more episodes, but eventually makes the decision to head back to the UK and. Uh, figure some things out uh with the option of maybe coming back at some point yeah 
I, I think it's been brought up, or maybe it hasn't. I actually don't know. But uh, Jaden's main main reason for becoming an idol, um, he enjoyed the music, but his main motivation was that he wanted to get to a position where he could provide for his family because his parents uh, worked and would o- often work overtime just to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was like, if I become a super idol, I'll earn enough money so they don't have to work anymore. And I think he, during the his time with Rhythmix, he realized that as noble as that um, motivation is, he should just really want to be an idol. And so he's like reevaluating mm. uh, his the choices and why he made those choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what he's going to be doing back at home. Makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I really like the way that you played it, that you ended up playing it out. And I, I can't wait for people to hear those episodes because they're, they're extremely sweet. Yeah, me too. Um, piggybacking off of that then, seeing as how it's kind of been established before that Jaden and Lucia would often work together to like make the music and, and she would try to write, like help him write lyrics and he would try to help her um, like learn about mu- music itself and like how to play music. I think um, this will kind of be the solidification that she needs to finally nail music production as much as like Ooh. she can and um <laughs> i want lucia to enter her soundcloud rapper yes! <laughs> i want her <laughs> to like start making her own mixtapes and putting them online obviously still part of rhythmics but like i feel like that is such like a modern day rapper requirement like there is so much of rap music that is very it's all about being scrappy. It's all about like figuring it out yourself and, and putting yourself out there in mixtapes and experimental tracks and like that. So I think mm-hmm. um, uh, Trixie mixtapes are going to drop. Trix uh, tapes. If you will. Yeah, Trix tapes. <laughs> yes. I love that. Trix, that's what they're called. Trix tapes. <laughs> Trix tape one, Trix tape two. Yes. Um, And they're just like a little her own produced beats and her own freestyle that because she is enjoying working with rhythmic song but she needs to go on the rapper's journey Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh i'm gonna love that so much for her (laughs) and how about for the rest of rhythmics what what's up on the horizon now that there's no more evil supervillains to fight for a while uh well i think Valerie is uh has been has been considering uh very seriously whether her relationship with with Rain Shadow Records and her mentorship by Mary Rain is is actually uh helping more than it's hurting and uh maybe is maybe thinking about you know whether that's uh you know worth worth uh continuing the restrictions that, and uh grief that it's put her through Mm. no no hard plans yet but you know she's she knows that you know she's she's realized this is maybe not the only way to uh become the the idol that she wants to be and she knows that her friends are behind her on this Mm -hmm. i think for angie um it's the lawsuit obviously (laughs) <laughs> but then she's going to work on like the business plan for rhythmic for rhythmics for the next 5 years um probably go over like the ideal music contract and stuff like that and then um uh basically you know her her career trajectory to starting her own label <laughs> nice nice yeah and um, in addition to making sure that there is only ethical competition between her and her peers. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's really, yeah, that's what she's going to be working on. And she fights for idle rights. That she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there'll be like collective action in there somewhere where she's like, oh, it's time yes. to form a union. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Divided, we beg. Together, we bargain. Yeah, good, so, good, good, good. you know, there's the list. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but she's incredibly ambitious, so. <laughs> mm, hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, she's got her career plan. <laughs> I, I, for Queen Bee, I think right now, 
uh, she's gonna try and uh, like maybe get herself out there a little more. Maybe try and get and get that uh, like rivalry with Dame Divine going. But really, I think the biggest priority would be to try and get closer to the the group as Allen, because they would kind of like to be honest. They would kind of like to tell them, but they're also very, like, they don't know how. They're in their own head about it. Mm. Aww. So they want to see, like, uh, is Lucia going to bully Alan? Probably, but then the second that Angie... Ah, ah, <laughs> she would stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. Lucia's bar- bite is not as bad as her bark. She's just a little yappy dog of a person. Okay, I think I think that's probably a good place to call it in that case because I I know that Drac has to go soon. Oh, but thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for a wonderful retrospective. It's always good to go down memory lane with everybody, and also to talk about what's coming up in the future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's oh, yeah. always a delight. It was fun. Yeah, it was good. Thanks everyone mm-hmm. for listening. Thank you so much for all your support. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. So much more coming out. You're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, you look forward. We have, actually, I can probably say before uh, we go here, we'll have some interesting uh, formatting coming up for the episodes after this. Um, I said we'd have some interlude episodes. Um, we actually, the first things we recorded for arc th- that are going into arc three are some soloists type um, interludes. Not all of them are actual solo sessions because one of them is a duo session bet- between Angie and Lucia. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, those are those are long enough that they're too long to go into a soloist episode, but they're too short <laughs> to be like each one is a full episode. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we are gonna just split those up um, and release them weekly, only lightly edited. <laughs> um, and the, mm-hmm. those together will sort of be like episode 35 combined, I guess, to if that makes sense. So like it'll be like 35.1, 35.2, 35.3 because oh, there's nice. like four of them. Cute. So yeah, so you'll have a little bit more super idols in your feed after <laughs> after this Q&A comes out. And then after mm-hmm. that, we will have the wrap up to Jaden's. Well, I sort of the wrap up to Jaden's storyline. It's complicated. <laughs> Uh, we had the last session yeah. that we played out with Drac in full, but timeline-wise, because we recorded some things out of order, Jaden will still be around for one episode after that, uh, because Jaden had enough time to participate in the tournament round one before he left. Yeah. Yeah, so again, you still have a few more episodes left with Jaden, uh, and the, sp- the tournament especially will be great fun, so <laughs> hope everybody looks forward to all of that coming up very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'll talk to you all again mm-hmm. some some uh, some other time. I I don't know. So, <laughs> How do you end things like this? See you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>